you know, there was a moment where I was legitimately concerned that the 2023 Dubai Air Show would be a little bit boring. After all, this year has already seen some massive aircraft orders from the likes of Air India, Indigo, Eva Airways, KLM, Air Canada. It just didn't seem that anyone was saving up for the show. But boy was I wrong. This year's iteration of the Dubai Air Show has been monumental with some absolutely massive orders and announcements. And what's becoming a little bit of a Kobe Explains tradition at this point, I am actually here at the show to give you a first-hand account of who's walking out of the show a winner and who's walking out a loser. So then, who are the winners and losers of the 2023 Dubai Air Show? Let me explain. Now, before hopping into it, I want to let you guys know that this isn't going to be an exhaustive list of all the orders and announcements that happened during the show. It'll just be an analysis of the biggest and most interesting developments. So don't come after me in the comments if your favorite airline or manufacturer got left off the list. In fact, why don't you go to the comments and tell me what you think the highlight of the show was? I'll make sure to hang out in the comments section to read your responses. Okay, enough beating around the bush. Let's talk about the winners. Now, the first big winner of the show is the Boeing 777X. After laying a goose egg at the Paris Air Show over the summer, the 777X secured arguably the biggest order of the show. Emirates ordered 90 of the type, with a split between the 777-9 and the 777-8. Now, this deal is undeniably important because of how big it is. It's worth over $50 billion. But arguably more important than that is that it shows Emirates has renewed confidence in the jet. It's not exactly a secret that Emirates has been critical of Boeing in recent years. With mounting delays for the 777X program, Emirates has been vocally frustrated. But this order is a massive vote of confidence for the program. And I think that says a lot about the state of 777X development. The program seems to be making meaningful progress, with Stan Deal recently saying that certification testing is just over the horizon. So, in more ways than one, this deal is absolutely massive for Boeing. Another winner of the show is low-cost travel in the Middle East. During the show, Fly Dubai announced their intention to purchase 30 787 Dreamliners, which is their first wide-body order ever. This will allow Fly Dubai to penetrate deeper into Europe and Asian markets, allowing for long-haul, low-cost flights from their hub in Dubai. Now, long-haul, low-cost flights have trickled into a few markets at this point. You have French Bee and Norse in Europe, Scoot and Jetstar in Asia and Oceania, and Azul in South America. But this particular business model hasn't really existed in the Middle East until now. To be fair, Fly Dubai still has a lot of work to do before they're able to sustain long-haul, low-cost operations. As I've covered numerous times on this channel, that particular business model is tricky. But Fly Dubai has very strong business fundamentals, consistently turning a profit with its high quality and low cost service. It seems like if there is any airline who can bring long haul low cost to the Middle East, well, it's Fly Dubai. And now that they've bought the Dreamliner, they're in a great position to do just that and connect more people in the Gulf region to the rest of the world. Another big winner of the show is the 737 MAX. Now, the MAX got absolutely bludgeoned by the A320neo at this summer's Paris Air Show. But that wouldn't be the case this time around. It won some pretty significant orders from the likes of Sun Express and Ethiopian. The latter is particularly relevant because, if you'll recall, an Ethiopian 737 MAX crashed just a few years ago. While Ethiopian's order was neither huge in size or dollar value, it's important because it shows that Boeing has regained their trust. And as Boeing pointed out during the show, Ethiopian is one of their oldest and most important African customers. An unexpected winner at this year's air show is Boom Supersonic. By this point, we all know Boom. They're the plucky startup that's trying to bring supersonic travel back to the masses. But perhaps unsurprisingly, their path towards that goal has not exactly been the smoothest. A recent issue surrounds the production of its engine. 
All of the legacy engine manufacturers have shunned the company and refused to build them a dedicated engine. So Boom is striking out on its own and designing its engine from scratch. Now, engineering a new plane is always an expensive endeavor, but designing your own engine on top of that is bound to make costs balloon. But the company got a significant boost right before the show. Saudi Arabia, which is obviously a major player in this region, has decided to make a major investment in the company. Now, we don't know the exact specifics of the deal, but according to Crunchbase, the amount of money that Boom had raised before this deal went down was around $200 million. After the deal, that ballooned to around 700 million. Now flush with cash, Boom has the means to go out and hire a ton of highly skilled engineers to help not only build their plane, but also their new engine. Boom still has a long road ahead of them, but it seems that their odds of success just went up. Okay, so those are the big winners of the show. But I don't know about you, but every time I do one of these videos, I always find the losers to be way more interesting. So why don't we go ahead and switch gears and talk about who walked out of the show with the short end of the stick. But before we do so, I wanna mention something I noticed about this year's air show. As exciting as it was, there was definitely tension hanging in the air. According to the World Bank, the ongoing conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East could cause oil prices to spike to record highs, which would be really bad news for airlines. Of course, rising oil prices can bring uncertainty to all sectors, not just aviation. And when economies struggle, so do your investments. We've already seen plenty of instability in the stock market as of late, and rising oil prices could make things worse. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing my 401k stagnate and even go down. Now, I'm no financial expert, and this isn't financial advice, but it feels like a good time to reassess your investment strategy. And Masterworks, today's sponsor, could be a great way to hedge against instability. I've been telling you about Masterworks for over a year now. They're the guys who make fine art investing accessible to everyone. And since I first told you about their platform, they've paid out over $45 million to their numerous investors. And a number of those people turn out to be you guys. Now, since my audience has been so receptive to the Masterworks platform, they're letting those of you who haven't signed up yet skip their typical waitlist. So if you wanna take advantage of this opportunity, just visit my link in the description. You can get started using your phone or computer. Either way, it's really easy to get going. Our first loser of the air show is the A350-1000 and its Trent XWB engine. Now, don't get me wrong, 2023 has been undeniably good to the A350-1000. After all, its backlog has grown by more than 50%, and many of those customers are former Boeing widebody users. But at this year's show, the plane faced some unwelcome news. Tim Clark of Emirates said that his airline will not buy the A350-1000 in its current form. His main gripe is with the engine, the Trent XWB-97, which he says is not durable enough for the carrier's operations. Now, carriers in the region who already fly the type have had problems with keeping the engine on the wing. The harsh environments, as well as dust and sand ingestion, really wear down the engine. And this is something that Rolls-Royce themselves acknowledged. Now, the reason this is such a big deal is because Emirates is the largest customer of the 777-300ER, and the A350-1000 is explicitly designed to replace that jet. Now, Airbus and Rolls-Royce both assert that the XWB is a fantastic engine and is plenty durable. But if the duo can't assuage Emirates' concerns, then they stand to lose tens of billions of dollars in market share to their respective rivals, Boeing and GE. We actually already saw this at the show, with Emirates committing to 35 777-8s. And in a recent analysis, I broke down why the 777-8 is far inferior to the A350-1000. Now, on the bright side, Emirates did order 15 of the smaller A350-900s at the show, with Tim Clark saying that he has no concerns about the derated Trent XWB-84 that powers that particular jet. So the door is most definitely still open for the A350-1000 to join Emirates' fleet. But if that's going to be the case, then Airbus and Rolls-Royce are going to have to get to work. And soon. Speaking of Emirates, I think that their fleet strategy is also a loser from the show. 
you see one of the biggest catalysts of Emirates' growth has been the simplicity of its fleet. They fly the A380, the 777-300ER, and nothing else. But in recent years, their fleet situation has grown a lot more complex. They've made commitments to the 777-8, 777-9, 787-9, and the A350-900. And at this year's show, that complexity only grew, with Emirates adding the 787-8 and 787-10 to the list, while simultaneously cutting the 787-9. And of course, there's that A350-1000 order that could still happen. That means that within the next decade, their fleet could go from just two distinct aircraft variants to eight. Now look, I understand why Emirates would want to diversify their fleet. It's gonna give them way more operational flexibility. But the question that I have is whether or not they're biting off more than they can chew. Adopting a single new aircraft type always comes with risk, but to adopt five or six new variants in such a short span, well, that has the potential to be a mess. To make matters worse, Emirates hasn't been very forthcoming in how they actually plan to use these jets. And considering that their new aircraft strategy has shifted and morphed over the years, and once again changed during this show, it feels to me like they're buying them and then figuring out what to do with them later. Now look, Tim Clark is a genius, and he's made Emirates one of the most successful airlines on Earth. So maybe he's playing 4D chess here and I'm just being naive, but I don't think it's outlandish to say that this is a massive and risky strategic shift. And considering what Emirates has become, they sure have a lot to lose in the event that this strategy backfires. The next loser of the show is the Airbus Turkish Mega Deal. Heading into the show, there was anticipation that Turkish Airlines would place an order for over 350 Airbus jets, and all signs were pointing to this deal as being the crown jewel of the show. Now, Turkish and Airbus have said that they've agreed to a deal in principle, but they haven't yet crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. And as a result, they weren't able to sign the deal before everyone packed up and went home. And all of the information we got about the deal during the show came via a short statement from an Airbus spokesperson. This is a bummer because this deal is historic in scale, and it ought to be properly celebrated on the region's biggest stage. But before we get all fatalistic, let's put some things into perspective. Airbus is still securing a massive deal from a critical customer, and Turkish is securing the planes they need to enable their expansion goals. But at the end of the day, neither side got the satisfaction of holding a big, glitzy press conference in front of gobs of media. And for air shows like this, getting that publicity is more important than you might think. Ultimately, when you consider all the buzz that the deal was generating before the show, the way it played out made it feel anticlimactic. The fact that both sides couldn't hash out all the details even a little bit sooner makes the whole situation feel like a missed opportunity. Another loser of the show is the Embraer E2. Now, Embraer has actually had a couple of nice air shows in a row. They made my winners list for both Farnborough 2022 and Paris 2023. And coming into the week, it seemed like they could keep that train rolling. After all, the Middle East has plenty of city pairs that would be ideally suited for connection by the E2. On top of that, the market for smaller single aisle jets has been largely untapped in the Middle East. As of today, about 90% of airliners in the region are wide bodies, which, according to Embraer, leads to load factors below 70% within the region. This seems like the perfect scenario for the E2 to snag some orders. But unfortunately, the E2 hardly made a peep at the show. Aside from showing off its sick new livery, which looks absolutely incredible. Embraer couldn't convert a single order for the type, which must be a huge disappointment. Now, folks at Embraer are still pretty happy with how the show went. From conversations that I had with some of the folks over there, it sounds like they had a lot of good conversations that could convert into big orders down the road. But there's no beating around the bush here. Not securing an order at an air show always hurts. And sadly, that was the case for the E2 this time around. Now, the last loser of this year's show is any airline who hasn't engaged in fleet renewal in the last few years. Right now, we're in the midst of an arms race for new planes, 
because the industry has suffered all sorts of supply chain and quality control issues, not to mention delays to programs like the 777X and A321XLR, airlines have decided to start placing giant bulk orders as a hedge against future production issues. The 2023 Dubai Air Show has only accelerated that arms race. Hundreds of planes were ordered this week, some of which won't be available until the mid to late 2030s. Of course, this is great news for Boeing and Airbus, but it's an emerging problem for smaller, less well-capitalized airlines or those that haven't engaged in a fleet renewal in recent years. If you're one of these airlines, good luck finding delivery slots. Making a deal with a lesser might be the only way you can renew your fleet anytime soon. So those are the winners and losers of the 2023 Dubai Air Show. If you want even more Dubai Air Show content, then boy, do I have good news for you. I had the chance to talk all things 777X with a Boeing product specialist and also got to interview Embraer's VP of Marketing. And if that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, I just did a trip to Toulouse where I captured a ton of footage at Airbus. Either way, a ton of great content is coming your way, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of it. I also wanted to mention that my trips to these air shows, Dubai and Paris over the summer, uh, they're self-funded and they are not cheap. If you want to help support my work and help send me to Singapore in February, you can either buy me a coffee at the link down below or you can support my Patreon. I also took a lot of great photos during the air show and I'm going to be turning those into posters if you want a Kobe Explains print. Either way, I appreciate your support no matter what form that it comes in. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up. I think the biggest loser of the show is honestly my hair. Just like getting blown all over the place here. Okay. <sighs>